Good evening everyone, uh, thanks for joining us, it really really is much appreciated. Um, hopefully you had a chance to have a look at some of the key dates on this initial slide that was up for the first few minutes of the presentation. Um, can I just ensure that we all cameras and microphones are turned off throughout. Um, if you have any questions it says at the bottom there, um, while the video is running through, please type them in the chat function um, and I'll do my best to answer them after uh, the presentation. And I'll come on the screen and do that live and um, people can keep asking questions as we go and then once we've done that we'll close the evening. Um, just an introduction, my name is Mr Lampard. Um, I'm sure I've met most of you over the years but you know, part of my role at Fire and Gay as an assistant head teacher is raising standards at Key Stage 4. Um, so we're really upping this half term and this term, sorry, uh, the work we're doing with the year 10. So we've sort of had a, a term to settle in um, following such a tough couple of years, a term to settle into their GCSEs, uh, settle into their new subjects, settle into ways of working at GCSEs from subject teachers. And now we're looking to up the support uh, and the interventions that we're doing to provide the best possible chances that they can. And this will continue to run through all the way through um, until the end of year 11 and they're doing their actual GCSEs. Um, and hopefully progressing on where, where they want to for after key stage four. So just running through these key dates. So this week as well, the year 10s will have had a year 10 mindset assembly with their tutors. Um, the 12th of Jan, which is today, the, the year 10 parents and carers guide to supporting your child with your GCSEs. Um, at the end of the month, the 31st of January, there are going to be 54 students um, selected. Uh, 18 English, 18 Maths and 18 Science, and you can only do one of those subjects. Um, the subject staff are selecting the, those students that they feel best um, be supported with some online tutoring in those subjects, sort of 15 weeks uh, of online tutoring. Um, we then have running from the 20th of January for two days and the 17th and 18th of March for two days, My Future Self Project. This is a project um, you get a lot more information about, but it's basically, will my future self thank me for the decisions I'm making now? Um, how can I really make sure that my future self um, benefits from what I'm doing in year 10, 11 and beyond? This then all links in with the year 10 report. So the second report um, comes out week commencing the 14th of Feb. We then have the parents evening following that in March. Um, and then the year 10s have their internal assessments starting the 4th of April. So some really key dates and obviously we'll be supporting all the way through. You know, so for example, when it's coming up towards the year 10 internal assessments, there'll be lots of work being done um, in choose time in lessons about revision techniques, how best to prepare um, and all those kind of stuff. But tonight is sort of the first step in making sure that we support our students um, as best we can. So what is this evening all about? Well, it's this basically, what can a parent or carer do to support um, their child when they're running through their GCSEs? Um, school changes every year. Obviously in the last two years, we've had massive change, massive disruption, massive impact um, on our students and it's how best we can support them. Um, if we just leave them to it in, in lesson time, we will see students not being as successful as we possibly can be. It's the support around them, the support from the tutor, the year team, um, other members of staff, but also the support from home. Um, a supportive home environment um, will go such a massive way to success for the students moving forward. So to start with some common frustrations um, that we've heard from parents over the years, just six for you. And you may well be reading and thinking, oh yeah, I hear this at home, I don't want to add extra stress, I don't like the arguments when I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to be supportive, but they think I'm nagging, all these kind of things. So it's just sort of six very common things there that we often hear and see. Um, what I will say is if you do have any questions at all, um, the whole purpose of tonight is about support. One of the things we want to do is support you guys as well. And the biggest thing for me um, with the support from parents and carers is that communication. Um, so it's knowing if you have any questions who to go to. Now obviously you have your year team with Mr Brooks, um, Mrs Griffiths and Mr Howlett as part of the year team. You also have um, my, myself and Mrs Laird from a leadership point of view that look after all things Key Stage 4. Um, but the first port of call should always be your child's tutor and hopefully things that they can ask, uh, answer for you. So if you have questions, the tutor is always the best place um, to start. Um, and close communication with the tutor over the next sort of 18 months towards their GCSEs will be key. So looking at some of these common frustrations, leaving things to the last minute, um, don't want to cause stress and argument. There's too many resources out there. Which ones are the best ones? 
All these kind of things can cause extra stress. And what we want to do is remove as much of the stress and things that get overwhelming as we possibly can to make the next 18 months as smooth as we possibly can. Obviously, there's lots going on in the world around us at the moment, um, and we'll make sure we do deal with that and support with that. But um, in day-to-day, into school, all these kind of things, these common frustrations to try and best support the students, and that's what it's all about. So where do we start? Top tip number one, get them to lessons. Wherever you look, whatever research you you do whatever research we do as schools and um, the top tip number one is to get them to lessons now obviously at the moment I think turn on that can be very very challenging our attendance matters drives that we push out every every term or so and um, I appreciate if as it says often on the back of these postcards that get sent home and the letters it's not a push to say you've got to come in no matter what we appreciate if you're ill if you're poorly and um, if you have to isolate whatever it might be we appreciate you can't be there but if you can be in lessons, to be there um, and to be fully engaged in lessons. Um, and it's meant to be, this attendance matters push is meant to be a real positive spin on if you can be there, be there and make the most of every lesson, every minute, they all count. So that every minute, for example, not being late, um, coming in from break or wandering in as the whistle goes to come off the field and wandering around with your friends and nipping to the toilet and getting to your lessons a few minutes late it disrupts the learning for yourself and for others and um, to make a real positive start to be there on time every single minute counts um, and we've done work with the students over the last sort of 12 months or so about if you miss a certain amount of days or certain amount of minutes how much that equates to by the end um, of the school year like i said at the beginning i do appreciate how difficult it is at the moment fully aware of that and by no means are we saying as a school Get yourself and you've got to be in every single if you're poorly you're poorly you need to take the time to get better if you're isolating if something's um happened in your family group or something like that we appreciate that but when you can be in lessons to make the most of every single lesson and when you're in lessons not just being in there but in fully engaging making the most of everything there is from the teacher from your peers to the resources you've got and um, from the activities going on in lessons to make use of those times and we're really trying to push that with the students So how can you make a difference? Um, well, as it says there, your involvement is crucial and can make such a huge difference um, at this time. It could be the difference. Um, a supportive parent, someone that's doing the right things, um, can really be the difference between success and failure from gaining a grade three or a grade five, that place at college at the end of year um, 11 or sixth form or wherever you want to go. It could be the difference to getting there or not. Um, so Kevin Collins, the chief executive of the Education Endowment Foundation or the EEF, and actually said that we know that levels of parental engagement are consistently associated with children's academic outcomes. We also know that a parent's job, education, income matters less to their child's development um, than the, what they actually do with them. Okay, so all he's saying is it's so important, um, the parental engagement. It doesn't matter what the parents do, their jobs, their background, anything like that. It matters what you do with them, spending that time and the right time with them and can make such a difference. Um, and that's the thing, you don't need to be an expert in every subject and um, you just need to be supportive and doing those things. And that's what we're going to work through tonight. You just need to know how best to spend the time you do have. Um, and there's sort of three or four stages that we're going through. Um, and this is where this evening comes in. So what is my role as a parent and care in supporting? So I'm just going to run through um, a number of these bullet points, maybe expand on one or two. Um, but just a sort of a list to get us moving. Um, so you can be a link with your school and child, so going to parents evening, asking questions, finding out how best you can help them in subject specific areas. Providing the tools for homework and revision, whether that's a quiet space, good Wi-Fi, a workbox, so things like pens, post-it notes, anything they need for there, so it's all there without them having to search and get, adding to the stress of that first 20 minutes of running around trying to find paper and pens and all these kinds of things. So a workbox could be key. Uh, being the banker, and we all know as parents and carers, um, that goes without saying, but um, paying for the tools, equipment and revision guides that they may need. You could act as a study buddy, so showing an interest in the subject, helping them with homework. So I do this with my um, daughter and her maths often, and we sit down and work through it. She often shows me how to do the sums, not because I can't necessarily do them, but because the way the process that they do these days has changed. So it's interesting. She learns and she understands it better by being able to explain it to me. So showing that interest and having any kind of discussion about it. 
The entertainment office to find out about podcasts, apps, theatre productions, film, exhibitions. Obviously, that may be a bit tricky this at the moment, but there will be a lot of stuff online. Um, but things that are relevant to your child's learning and something you can enjoy together. Sounding board and advisor, helping your child uh, to break tasks down so that they're manageable, keeping a subtle eye on the progress and celebrating achievements. Um, one of the things that students get overwhelmed with is when they have a huge project or things they've let things go for a few weeks and then they've got lots of stuff to catch up on. It's being able to help them prioritise and um, break the tasks down and, and tick them off in the right way. Um, and like we say, celebrating those things, finding a positive way forward when things are going getting a bit tricky. Being their emotional support, so this one's very key, listening to their worries and anxiety, helping them manage their feelings and solve their problems. Um, a problem may feel not quite as important um, to them or to us as it may do to, to the person that's talking about it, but being able to listen, discuss it, talk it through is so, so key, um, and coming up with things to solve their problems. Being project manager, um, maybe agreeing rules for homework or revisions, time on TikTok, time on Snapchat, whatever they're doing, but balancing this, this time. Making sure they do have the fun stuff because you do have to have a balance and a break of both, but making sure you've got your revision plans and they stick to it um, and that they're there and they're agreed times, not their imposed times, but that they're agreed times. Okay. Last couple, so you can act as a go-between. So you said it's the link between school and child this is similar so your child in school when necessary making sure problems are nipped in the bud um, asking questions your child can't or won't so if there's any issues in school if there's any challenging times for the, for the child and um, to be that go-between and the final one information provider and interpreter searching out websites finding out about the subject maybe familiarizing yourself with exam structure and content um, whatever your individual child's needs your chief role will always be that person who cares most in the world uh, the champion of their needs, the admirer of their every achievement, the most important role you will play is that of a person who will love them and be proud of them whatever happens. So how do we get term two off to a flyer? And um, this is sort of the parent slide. The next slide is for students, but this is sort of the parent slide. Um, so working through them, as we said at the beginning, getting into lessons. If they can be in lessons, to be in lessons on time. And that is so key. Those minutes that add up. Students that are late after registration or to registration and then off the field at break and off the field at lunch and just take those few extra minutes, those five, ten minutes every day or however long they're late for will really add up. Um, if you have an 80% attendance rate at the end of year 11, that will show mean that you basically missed a whole year of school over the years, over the five years. Um, so we're really pushing for that high 90% if we can. But like I said, I do appreciate everything going on at the moment. Um, from a parent's side, really, really praising um, your child, making sure you praise all those good things that they do. Um, once heard a motivational speaker uh, at a teacher's conference talking about praise making the world go round um, and how it makes it such a happy and beneficial place for us all. So that praise when students do a great bit of work or they help out at home, whatever it might be, but that real praise, especially linked to schoolwork, will be key. From a parent's side, knowing the structure of the course, um, so those key dates, the exams, when coursework's due in, and again, if you have those kind of questions, obviously that's in the school communication stuff, um, but also if you have any questions you're not sure, tutors the first port, port of call or exams office, whatever it might be, um, and to help them with the key dates. So we do this as we come towards um, exams, so to help key dates for revision and stuff, so nothing becomes all of a sudden you've got no time to do it, um, but having a look that you've got um, an exam in one of the BTEC or CAMTEC type subjects and you've got some coursework during for another subject and it's all in the same week so we don't have these hot spot weeks where it's going to be absolute frantic um, and stressful time that we can plan those kind of things out so looking ahead um, maybe every half term maybe even further than that and providing some key dates and just giving gentle reminders not nagging as it says down at the bottom there but reminders and support to say to the uh, your child we've got these things coming up we need to get ahead of them and um, we need to make sure we're doing that and as it said on those common frustrations not leaving everything to the last minute and having two or three big bits of work that can impact their GCSEs moving forward what students really really need at home is somewhere a, a work area that they know is their area that they can work whether that's a desk in their room whether that's a desk somewhere else in another room but a quiet area that they can work um, and that's key in having the right resources um, will be key for that and all the things they need all those pens pencils post-it notes revision little cards whatever it might be um, it's just there in a little box ready to go
One of the things that I think is probably the most important thing moving forward, and I said this to the year 11s in the, the first term, and I say it to the sixth formers all the time, um, we're creating working and homework rules. Now that's together that you're creating rules of when you expect the homework to be done, um, making sure that there's also time for uh, your child to have their time, so whether it's if they're playing sport, if they have half an hour or whatever it might be on TikTok and Snapchat, whatever they need to be doing, but they need that time as well. But creating those rules um, in a working environment will be key, but it's creating it together so there's agreement and there's ownership from the student and your child um, of where they are. But one thing I would suggest is before any homework's done, this 10 minute organisation after every day. So Monday to Friday, just 10 minutes, when you get in, you organise, a student organises their their day basically, their notes from their day. If it's in a folder, if they've got something to come home or if it's not, they can remember. They've only had three lessons in the day, hopefully they can remember what they did. And just to make some notes with the date, what the subject was, sort of two or three key things from that and organising all their stuff before they crack on with any homework they've got. That 10 minutes helps you organise all your notes, it helps transfer it into your long term memory and it's there and organised for what you did on those lessons and then that can be kept in a folder. I was head of six one for a number of years at Farlingay, um, and I stress to the six ones that is the single biggest, it's 15 minutes of six formers, but it's the single biggest thing I kept saying to them is this 10 minutes before you crack on with any homework or when you get home at the end of the day, having a 10 minute focus on what you did and just putting it into your subject folders, date, topics, what you did, whether you found it, you can start using green, amber, reds, whether you found it easy, difficult, challenging, so you know that you might need a little bit more revision or a light touch revision, depending on how well you've, you've taken in the information. This 10 minutes organises everything and it actually cuts down time in the long run. As you said before, uh, the contact with teachers, having that positive relationship, um, being there, knowing who your student teachers, uh, who the teachers are for your child, make sure you know who to um, contact if you need to. And if you're not sure, tutor, year team, myself, Miss Lev, we can all support with those kind of things. Talk to your child um, about your own expectations and listen to your child's expectations of what they're wanting to be doing um, and what you expect from them, whether that's in terms of homework, whether that's in terms of next steps after after filing go, whether it's on to filing go sixth form, onto a college, whatever it might be. Um, just start those kind of expectations in terms of supporting your child with their GCSEs. Um, Regular check-ins, not just every five minutes popping down and it becomes nagging or they, the student sees it as nagging. Even if you've got the best intentions, it will be perceived as nagging, I can assure you of that, um, having my own son and daughter. Um, just those regular check-ins, make sure everything's all right, maybe having a little run-through of what they've done, um, and then that links back into that praise if they've done it well, and all those kind of things, which I'm sure all of you do all the time, but just those kind of things, those regular check-ins that really, really help. And then, as I said before, that post-16 goal, what are the course requirements? This time next year, well, in a couple of, this week in fact, sorry, tomorrow, the year 11s have the final go six form open evening. Um, many of them have already been to college open evenings. Many have already filled in application forms. Many have already had interviews at other um, places. The final go six form takes place sort of towards the uh, end of Feb, March kind of times. Um, but this time next year, the final go six form open evening will be going on. Um, so it's only a year away until students will be really focusing their mind on what they want to be doing after year 11. Um, it's a real key thing. So having that goal, what is the course requ requirements to get onto it? Um, if I want to study A-level maths, I need that seven in maths. If I want to be um, doing uh, A-level PE, what do I need for those kind of things? If I want to go to a college course and do hair and beauty or plumbing or catering or something that we don't offer at Farlingay, um, what do I need to be getting onto those courses? And having that kind of goal so you've got the end target and the goal of where my next step kind of is and then moving on from that getting turned two off to a flyer um sort of the student guide um, it sort of mirrors everything that i've just said for the parent guide so i won't go through this in too much detail um, but from a student size to be committed all the way through to take care of these things that we're going to look at in a bit more detail and they have in their assembly their attitude effort and preparation there's going to be a million and one things out of their control they're probably going to be aware of them all but they can't waste their time and energy and um, out of things that are out of their control but there are three big things in their control they are their attitude their effort and their preparation if they take care of those three things in any aspect of life but especially when you're talking about school and um, exams and getting to lessons and doing a coursework and all this kind of stuff that is key so with those three things in mind, the attitude, effort and preparation, 
is getting going to all the lessons that they possibly can do and being on time. Um, that they take responsibility for recording their homework, um, whether that's being uploaded on Teams by their teachers or whether it's into the journals or they need to write it down somewhere. Um, and then they actually need to do it. They need to listen and understand all the extra information that you might have. So for GCSEs, there's going to be a lot more information than there was in year 7, 8 and 9, whether that's a little bit of extra reading um, around the subject, um, a bit of extra research on certain websites, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, popping online and doing some extra work that they need to do. There's a bit more information that you'll need for GCSEs. As we talked about in the last slide, that 10 minutes a night to organise themselves, I can't stress that enough. That'll be the single biggest thing I'm pushing for, the, uh, for students over this half term as well, is making sure that becomes a habit. If you get into that habit now, for the year 10s all the way through year 11, year 12 and 13, even on to university if students choose to go on to that, on apprenticeship, whatever it might be, that 10 minutes will really um, be beneficial. Students need to keep a balance, um, as we all do. Um, I remember, as I said, being head of sixth form, as it comes to exam times, I'd get in at seven o'clock in the morning, there'll be students already sat in the study room starting to do some revision, and when I left at six o'clock at night, they'd still be there um, doing their revision and working and stressing and everything, and that's no good for anyone. If they've been to lessons all day and every spare minute, they're stressing and they're going home and doing some more. Yeah, we may, may all have times where we need to do a little bit of extra work, but when you're seeing it day after day after day, there's going to be no good for anyone. So keeping that balance, and that's where planning, um, planning those expectations of homework, planning the expectations of revision, planning those expectations of all the key dates, so that you can put in those things that balance. So um, as a PE teacher for me, it'd be doing playing, watching um, some sport, going to the gym, whatever it might be, whatever it is for your student, like I said on the last couple of slides, whether that's a bit of TikTok, whether that's a bit of agreed time um, to have this kind of a break away from the, the academic work and the schoolwork to have that balance, whatever it is for them, whether it's if they're creative and they're artistic, whether it's a performance, whether it's music, whatever it might be, giving them that time to make sure that they do keep a balance, to switch off, recharge a little bit and be able to go again. Um, often in this in these cases having a good balance obviously you've got to keep the balance you can't just go right well, I'm not doing anything and um, I'm going to be listening to music for the whole evening and that's going to be no good as well but keeping that balance is key and then that's what we've talked about all the way through when we talk about keeping the balance not getting overwhelmed those key dates plan it stick to it um, and for students not to get overwhelmed now if they do talking to students uh, talking to teachers sorry what we often see is students get behind on a bit of coursework, don't talk to parents and carers, and don't talk to teachers, and all of a sudden there's lots of things due in and they've just buried their head in the sand. Unfortunately, now we're at GCC um, level and moving forward, that's not going to go away, as we all know. Um, it's just going to still be there, um, and the more we ignore it, the more that's going to build up on top of that, and the more it becomes overwhelming. So as early as possible to talk to teachers about it. Talk to you guys at home about it. Talk to head of year, talk to their tutor. We will all support we'll all make sure we support the best we possibly can. So I talked earlier on about three stages to success. Stage one is learning the content first time round. So whether that was online lessons, whether that's in lesson, and that's where that 10 minutes consolidates it at the end of each night, learning that content first time round is so important. Okay, starting to push it into your long-term memory rather than having to go back and start learning things again, so being engaged in class, all those kind of things. Stage two is a revision and how we look at revision um, and how we prepare ourselves for revision and finding the right revision that works for the, the student, the subject, um, that will best suit them because it will be different for everyone. And stage three is the actual exam um, and what we can do in the exam. So what we're looking at is getting it right at each stage. So stage one was learning the content first time around. So we're going to go through what can go wrong and then hopefully if we don't do these things that can go wrong, they will go right. So here we are. So the first one is, and you may well have heard this at home, not liking the teacher. Um, that's a big one. Um, some students won't in necessarily engage with the teacher as well as they can do. That's really unfortunate if that happens, and we hope that it doesn't. Um, but it can't be a barrier to impact on students getting the grades um, and success that they are capable of or should be getting. Um, so they need to sort of push that to one side and focus on the subject area. Um, whether there's a lack of interest in the subject, you pick the subject, or it's a core subject, um, and whether it's, I don't necessarily need it for my um, progression after, after year 11, or um, it's not exactly what I thought when I picked it at GCSE, um, but you need to make sure that the interest is there and the motivation stays up. 
if thing, you find things difficult, or students find things difficult, rather than really pushing yourself and going to that old adage that hard work pays off and, get, and giving up instead, that can really impact, and it will only impact on the student. If they've had a couple of difficult times, whether it's over lockdown or with a couple of bits of coursework or homework or in one subject and so they're no good at that subject, that can really impact and have a negative in, um, impact on them overall. Um, and this is one of the things we said, poor focus, you know, a lack of focus or poor attitude and effort. So these are the things that are in your control. There are many things out of your control that we can't control, but these things we can do. So those are the things we need to get right. Um, and there's no excuse for this one, it's getting behind with homework. If you've recorded it and you're on top of it, there shouldn't be any excuse for getting behind with homework. So stage two, when we get to the revision stage, so this is where, whether we're doing year 10 internal assessments towards the end of this year, or mocks in year 11, or towards the actual GCSEs, what can go wrong with revision? First one is not doing any. Um, hopefully every student will do, do some, and the idea of the year 10 internal assessments, mocks and things like that, is to give it your best shot, not just think this is a mock, I'm not gonna bother. Um, it's about doing it properly um, and giving yourself the best possible chance so you can see where you actually are, okay? Um, shouldn't leave it all to the last minute. That's where a revision plan comes in. Your teachers, your tutors, myself, will all help students with ensuring that it's not left to the last minute and revision plans. And that's where not having a plan, you need to have a plan. Um, not being short to revise, Obviously, you're going to have topics that you need to revise. That's where talking to teachers comes in. That's where understanding in that 10 minutes a night or when you've done assessments and you know your strong areas, your areas you need to maybe revise a little bit more. Um, those kind of things are key. With revision being unrealistic, thinking you're going to revise 10 till 10 o'clock at night till midnight, um, these things can't happen. Not revising with your phone next to you, all those kind of things um, are key. Being realistic and thinking, you know, I've got an hour here, I can do some real good quality revision on history or whatever it might be, um, and really focus and make the most of those times and turning off all the other distractions. Um, it could go wrong if you become overwhelmed, not knowing where to start, that's where your plan comes in. Um, and not making the most of your revision activities, lessons and teachers at schools. Now in year 11 there will be uh, revision packs and revision days and all this kind of stuff to support. So it's making sure you make the use of those and asking those teachers because every subject is slightly different. The way of revising for every subject might be slightly different. Every student is slightly different and what works for them. So it's about what find, finding what works for your student, your child in that subject. And that's where we can support as well. So moving on to stage three into the exam. So what can go wrong? Obviously, a number of things. This is where a big part of the controlling and controllables comes in. Um, so making sure all these things are done well in advance and being aware um, and ready to go is really, really key. So obviously getting the wrong time and place for the exam is key. Having that added into your plan, um, into your revision plan and added onto the exam for the exam plan. Making sure you don't arrive late, putting extra stress and extra pressure all the way through. Obviously, it's a lot better to arrive early. Um, having had your breakfast, something to eat or drink to fire up the brain and the body. Um, not having a late night the night before. And you arrive in good time to take that stress away from that side of it. Um, and whether you do something for half an hour at school um, before the exam or arrive exactly on time for the exam, but not arriving late. Um, being unfamiliar with the exam and the structure, obviously it, there'll be a lot of work done um, in all subjects. Um, I'm doing some of my year 13s at the moment actually, um, in making sure they know the exam and the exam structure and what should be coming up when, what types of questions. So being aware that you do these kind of things, whether it's doing past papers, working lessons, all that kind of stuff um, is key. So there's nothing as a shock to you as you go um, in through the exam. Make sure you have the correct materials is key. Um, what you don't want to be doing is having to rely on putting your hand up and hoping that um, the school can provide whatever it is, whether it's something for maths or a technical piece of equipment, um, or even simple, something as simple as bringing three, four pens in case one or two run out. Okay, so it's make sure you have the correct equipment. Um, make sure you don't panic during the exam. Obviously, when you're panicking, you're not going to be performing to your best. You need to remain calm. Um, even if the questions aren't exactly as they might, you'd hope they'd be, um, remaining calm, um, keeping everything under control will be key. Um, one of the big things is starting to read an exam question, thinking you know what the answer 
um, the questions asking you to answer and then going for it. What we need to do is really get into that exam technique and there'll be a lot more work done on the exam technique about reading the exam, understanding exact the question, understanding exactly what it's asking you to do, specifically what it's asking you to do, how many marks it's looking for, how you're going to get those marks before you even attempt to start answering it. Um, and not having a poor use of time. So taking too long on some smaller mark questions and then not leaving yourself enough time on the longer mark questions. Um, all these kind of things are really key to get right and something that you can really easily control when it gets to exam season. So moving on to mindset, and this is a massive thing um, that my future self, those four dates, the two in January and the two in March will be looking at um, about these kind of things. And I have mentioned attitude, effort and preparation a number of times and I'll continue to um, all the way through the next 18 months for the, for the year, current year 10 students. So year 10 and GCC mindset, the first thing, what is that? Now, if we do the same things, if students do the same things they've done in year 7, 8 and 9, they're going to really, really struggle at year 10. Um, there needs to be, when we get into that GCC mindset, um, and we see it we're moving from GCC to A level as well, it often takes a student a term, half a term a term, to settle into the GCC way of working, which is why we then plan to start sort of January time for the students um, with all this kind of stuff for them. So what is it? it it's that thing of being able to take responsibility for your own learning, doing that extra bit of independent learning, doing that extra bit of research, that bit of reading, not just doing the bare minimum to get by, to tick a box, to go, yeah, I've done it, that's absolutely fine. To actually put the effort in to push yourself to do the best things you possibly can be. So that's where a GCC mindset comes in. Am I taking responsibility for what I'm doing? Am I working as hard as I possibly can? Have I prepared in the best way? Those kind of things are GCC and year 10 mindset. Now, we've talked about controlling the controllables. I've mentioned it a number of times. Um, like I said, you need to be aware of those things that are around us, but if they're out of your control, if you're wasting energy um, and you're stressing about things that are out of your control, I know it's really difficult to do. Um, from a sporting background, I used to do this all the time. If I walked out to bat as a cricketer, knowing I'd done everything I could to prepare, if I get a good ball first up or early on in the innings, not a lot I can do about that. But if I, I've walked out there knowing that I haven't prepared pro properly, then that is my responsibility. So if I control the controllables and I prepare properly, I put in all the effort I possibly can and have the right attitude all the way through, that is key. And if the students can do that moving forward in any aspect of life, but if they can walk into the exam at end of year 11 knowing that they've had the right attitude throughout, they've put the effort in and they've prepared as best they can, they can't worry about that one question that might come up that's a little bit that they, it's a little bit tricky and they're a little bit weak on. They can't worry about Oh good. I mean, we had a girl, unfortunately, had a car crash on the way. And what ifs? All these what ifs that could happen. You need to be aware of them and sort of have a little plan if something was to go wrong. But you can't be wasting energy on all those things around it. Focus on those things you can control. The next four things all sort of link into that. Maintain your motivation all the way through um, from now until the end of year 11. Obviously, that's really, really difficult to keep motivation high. But having that plan of when key dates are in, we can ramp it up a little bit and then take that, keeping that balance again. So we're keeping a balance in day to day life, but also over the whole GCC course, keeping that balance. So we know when there's sort of a little bit of a quieter time and we don't see maybe quite as much this week, but knowing next week it's going to ramp up a little bit, or whether we want to balance it across the two. Um, encouraging persistence all the way through. So we're not giving up when things get tough and we think, oh God, this is, this is getting tricky. I don't want to do it. Always having that end thing in mind. What am I doing for after GCCs? What do I want to get out of this course? All those kind of things are really, really key. And being persistent, as we said, moving through GCSEs and beyond, whatever we're doing after Farlingay, it, it becomes harder and harder and harder every level you go up. So being persistent, being resilient, and all those kind of things that we hear about are key for the, your performance and results. Managing students' moods and your child's moods are key. Um, not becoming overwhelmed, not becoming stressed as, we, as best we can. Um, and like we said, controlling those kind of things, that knowing if I've controlled those kind of things, all the other bits um, will take care of themselves. And linking into my future self and asking them that question at all times, whenever it gets to that. If they have a think about what they maybe want to do and they may well have no idea yet, and that's absolutely fine, they may well not even know during sixth form um, and even beyond what they want to properly do um, when they're older. But having a kind of idea of will my future self thank me so when I'm in my 20s, when I'm in my 30s, when I'm in my 40s, whatever it might be, will my future self thank me for making these decisions I'm making now? Is it the best decision to do what I'm doing? Or should I be doing something else? Will the other thing benefit me more? 
and that's key. And we've seen with the current Year 11s that started in my Future Self project last year, how key that is. Pausing every now and again and asking themselves if they're making a bad decision or they're thinking about doing something that may not. Will my future self thank me for this decision I'm about to make? And if it will, great. If it won't, let's think again. So sort of summing up everything that we sort of looked through, um, I know I talked about communication early on, but working with filing gate over the next 18 months will be key. Um, from your side as a parent or carer trying to attend all events, even if that's a remote parents evening, that will still benefit. And obviously you showed the dates at the start. Um, but coming to those parents evening with a list of questions that you may have for each teacher. Um, one thing I find with my own kids is just writing down two or three key questions that I have for different teachers make sure that I get that in because often in a, in a conversation when you've got five minutes on a remote parents evening and the screen goes orange and it goes red and you've got 10 seconds left you don't get those questions in so having a plan when you do it but attending them all so you get that communication from both sides as you said being aware of the school calendar which is on the website with all the key dates as we went through at the start of this term you can see this term there's a number of things for year 10s there'll be a few other little bits and pieces going on for each subject so just being aware of those kind of things and putting them on the calendar as early as you possibly can Please, 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 for students and yourselves, don't wait till things go wrong. Um, if you've got concerns, early contact, early support, we want to put that in place as early as we possibly can um, to say things going wrong and students getting overwhelmed and stressful situations occurring. Do let staff know when it, a parent's evening, whether it's next time speaking to someone that you, or a note or in the journal, whatever it might be, that you want to work with them. Um, staff, it's a big, one of the biggest things to staff is having those parents that we... 100% are on board, 100% want to support, um, and I know nearly all parents and carers do want to do this, but it's just to let the staff know that you're there and you can help, and if they've got any, they want, you guys want the communication from us as well. Like we said, throughout knowing who the key contacts are, so your head of year, your head of faculty, head of subject, your tutor, obviously these may have changed through key stage three into key stage four and some new subjects or different subjects, so just knowing who these people are, <coughs> excuse me, and finally that school communication. I know there's a lot of letters coming out and you've probably had a lot from me over the last sort of term or so and you'll be getting a lot more I'm afraid, but school communication, from whether it's from Dr Siverite, whether it's um, about government guidance at the moment um, with everything going on whether it's from a subject teacher just so you're fully aware of everything that's going on I know there's a lot coming out um, but just be aware and then anything like that can just go straight onto that school calendar and um, that you have at home with those key dates so one of the things we looked at at the very very start of this presentation was about some common frustrations and so many resources out there what we've done is actually collate from heads of faculty and heads of subject some of the best websites that they feel um, will support you and child and their subject best. Obviously, they will then provide you know, further details within subjects, but these are sort of the lists of websites that you may want to have a look at. Um, I will. Rec this is being recorded, this presentation, and it will go onto the website, so if you do want to have a look back at any aspect, that will be there. Um, and as we move forward through towards the year 10 internal assessments, as we said in early April and beyond into year 11 and beyond that, we will have things like revision booklets, revision days, um, revision support and exam support and all these kind of things as we move forward. If you do um, want to go online or even get out and about into the high street, um, these kind of the CGP series um, and GCC guides for each subject are great um, and I know a number of subjects have already given out a number of these two year tens and um, so please do keep a look out for those so final slide for me thank you so much for attending and um, it really 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 is appreciated and will really benefit um, your child and um, what i'll do now is i'll have a look back through the chat function um, and see if anyone's put any questions on please do give me a minute to have a little read think and then answer the questions but what i will do is hopefully i'll pause this presentation appear um, on your screen and then I shall run through and answer the questions as best we can. If there's any I can't um, or need a little bit more or are specific about us, um, an individual student, I'll contact you um, separately or if I need to go through Dr Sivra or anyone else, I will then be back in contact um, with those people that are asking those questions. But thank you for coming on, thank you for listening um, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you guys have.